Hello, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the Takeoff, a deep dive into items and assemblies, the second in our four-part series of Beyond the Takeoff. So my name is Dave Wagner. I'm VP of Product Marketing here at Stack. And I have joining me today again is Troy Newman. And Troy will be handling the bulk of the presentation as he really goes in and does a deep dive on exactly how to set up and use items and assemblies in the Stack product. But before we jump into that, a couple odds and ends. So first of all, this session is being recorded and everyone will be getting a link to this recording as well as the information to um, sign up for our third session, which will be next Wednesday, which will be a deep dive into the estimate and proposal part of the portfolio. Uh, and that will all be coming out tomorrow, both a, a link to the recording and the next invitation. Uh, also, what we'll be doing is having, uh, going, having Troy go through the demonstration, but then at the end, we'll open it up for some questions. So if you have any questions as we step through the process, go into the questions dialog box, type those in, and we'll spend about the last 10 minutes sort of stepping through those. Also, we have a few polls that we'd like to get your opinion on. We're gonna start with the first one in just a second, and then we'll have a few others after Troy does his demonstration and before the, uh, the Q&A process starts. So with that said, let's get started with our first poll. And we'll give everyone a few minutes to answer the question, are you currently using stack items and assemblies? Pretty straightforward. Okay, we're up to almost 90% of you have voted. We'll give it a couple more seconds, see if we get any last minute request. Okay, excellent. So let's close this down. We'll take a quick look at the results. And what you're seeing here is that approximately 63% of you, it looks like about two thirds, almost exactly, um, aren't currently using them. So for those of you that have, this will probably get a chance to show you some things you're not aware of. And for the rest, it'll be a fantastic introduction into um, items and assemblies and stack. So with that said, uh, Troy, the floor is yours. Awesome, thank you, Dave. Um, give a, a quick intro here. Turn on my camera here. So you're probably seeing a big picture of, of me, so my apologies there. Um, my name's Troy, I'm with uh, the product team, been with Stack for uh, near the, since near the beginning. Um, done, oh my gosh, probably thousands of, of trainings on items and assemblies. And this can be you know, an intimidating uh, topic, but we're gonna try to to not go that route uh, today. So with that said, let me switch over to my screen and we will get started here. Oh, and it looks like, Dave, are you able to make me the presenter? I, I already did. Um, for some reason it, it's not taking it. Hmm. Let me try change it and I'll change it back. Hold on just a sec. Thank you. Okay, see if that did the trick. Uh -huh. There we go, thank you. All right, everybody you should be seeing my screen. Sorry about the, the slight delay there. Um, for those that attended, you know, last week, you know, thank you very much, uh, first of all, for, for coming back for this session. Um, if you didn't, uh, if you weren't able to attend um, last week, just to kind of bring you up to speed, this is a, a, a small project that we uploaded. Um, we simply measured on, you know, on this one plan and we did a takeoff for, um, for our brick here, uh, for our EFIS. Um, and then also for uh, the canopy, which, hey, while we're here, if you're ever trying to, to select something and it's actually behind something else, like right here, if I select, I'm selecting my EFIS, um, you can press the B key on your, on your keyboard. That'll send it to the back. And then now I can select my uh, little canopy 
a little trick there. Um, and there's lots of little tricks like that right here in this keyboard shortcuts section there. But so we, we measured those three things. Uh, we attached um, stack assemblies to both the EFIS and to the standard brick. We may do a little bit of that today as well, um, but we're really going to focus on kind of building building some things from from the ground up today, um, and then we'll see you know how far we we get in that. But we're going to stay um, simple. You know, we're going to work off this the same plan page that we that we measured last week, um, and we're just going to stay within these three takeoffs. Um, you know, we could measure you know five different plans and have a, a whole list of takeoffs over here i don't know that that really helps us though um we're talking more kind of conceptually uh, today so i think it's good to kind of just remain focused on on what we've already done all right so items and assemblies so we are talking about the upper right hand corner of the software so we have an items tab and we have an assemblies tab so in its most basic form an item is any type of uh, material or labor or even equipment if you wanted to go that route um, so an item could be you know um, a bucket of drywall mud it could be you know uh, one stud it could be um, you know a cubic yard of concrete it could be um, you know a ton of gravel you know any kind of material or labor you think of everything in stack starts out as an item and in a lot of cases you may just be able to use items um, an assembly is a grouping of those items and that's one of the things that we're going to take a look at today so we'll build out you know a few items attach them here we'll probably work off of our our, our brick here um, look at the reports you know, and then we'll take those same items, add them to the assemblies, look at the reports, and you'll find that you know it's it's the same. So a lot of people like to just stay within the items realm. I'll show you today how to do that. We'll also talk about advantages of moving those items into an assembly, and then we'll start to layer in um, some complexity into the assemblies. Okay, so you'll find. Um, Stack is, is incredibly powerful. Um, you can measure just about anything that you can imagine uh, mathematically. So there, I mean, there is just amazing power in that, uh, but not everyone needs that level. Um, so where over the years I've seen people kind of get intimidated with with building some math and assembly was honestly they they probably didn't need to go as far as they did. So we're going to kind of start simple. Like I said, we're going to you know, keep adding a layer of complexity and I'll explain why we're adding that layer um, so you can kind of determine, you know, what's the best fit for you, okay? So I'm gonna, you know, try my best to, to guide you um, along this little path. Um, but in the end, just remember that, you know, we're here, Stack is here to help you. You know, you can click on your little, your question mark up here. Um, there's some general information in the help guide. But honestly, just hit you know your, your chat now. You know, call in, schedule a training. You know, as a paid user, you have unlimited trainings, um, and we'll help you further with these concepts. Okay, so that's the key takeaway. Is I'm going to try to steer you in the right direction. Uh, but just, just never forget. You know, we have a truly amazing customer success staff, a truly amazing uh, trainer staff. Um, so please, please take advantage of that. They are here too help you all right items so one of the things it's just off the bat like last week when we were attaching assemblies to the takeoffs we did it here right so right here when actually this is the one that we attached um this is also how you can remove it goodbye there um but you add your items assemblies here the creation process actually occurs over here okay in the upper right so let's start with with items all right so for you if you look in your account um, you'll have a my items and it's probably 
as one folder that says like my items, unless you unless you went out and you know built it out. Uh, mine is a mess. My apologies. You can see my terrible naming structure here, where I tried to get these <laughs> up at the top. That's just from years of, of being around here. Um, so definitely would not recommend <laughs> this naming scheme. Although I am going to do a terrible naming scheme again today, just to put the the folder at the top. So I don't want to you know confuse anyone as we're going through. So let's create a new folder just for this. So we're going to say one one webinar. And oh, put me number two. That's fine. Within these folders, you can get as elaborate as you want. You know, a lot of people when they first starting into items, um, I would advise kind of build out of a flowchart. You know, think of your folder structure ahead of time. You can move things around after the fact. So if I created you know a folder and a subfolder and a subfolder and a subfolder, you know, you can move items out around after the fact, um, but honestly, it's not as easy as it should be. Um, so it's it's a lot easier just to, to work on the folder structure on paper first um, and then come in here and build this out. But here's my top level folder. Again, I could create, you know, subfolders and today we'll be working with brick, I think for the most part. So we can see I'm a little folder here and we're gonna go right over to this little ellipse and we are gonna create our first item. So this takes us to this really big screen, okay? Um, and we're going to do a number of these. So let's kind of start. start, here we go. Item name, again, this is any type of material. So today we will do a standard brick. Um, again, the more detail you provide uh, will be better, right, and it also, will print out on your reports. Um, I'm gonna keep things kind of simple here. Standard brick, you can add a description that is optional on purchase unit. So this is how you, you know, how you buy it. So for this, we'll say, you know, per brick, I imagine most of, it, if we have any masons on this call, they're, you know, buying it per thousand, right? So but again, we'll do some different examples here. You know, the measure is how we're going to measure it. So we're measuring in square feet, remember, because we're working off elevation views. So we're measuring in square feet. And then here we're going to do a conversion rate. So here we're saying, okay, we're measuring in square feet and we're, you know, our yield, you know, what we want this to generate is the number of bricks. So right now it's saying one square foot equals one brick. That's not entirely correct. Um, it's actually 0.77 uh, square feet equals a brick. So we're just giving Dak uh, the math, basically the, the math equation here. And again, we're gonna go through some more examples. Uh, I can say that that is a material and we'll be covering that you can do custom comp cost types, um, which can be really powerful too. And now I can put a, a unit cost, say, you know, we pay 80 cents per brick. An accounting code is an optional field. Um, so this could be like a SKU number, it could be a part number, it could be um, an actual accounting code if you were going to try to import this into you know, a, a, an accounting software. It's basically a free form text field that I could type anything that I wanted to. You know, I could say that this is part number, boom, and, and we're good. So two different ways that we can create items. So we've got one, you know, for standard brick. And I could just hit add and I'm done. If I look in my little brick folder, you know, I have I have one item. Okay, the really cool thing is that they're forever, right? So you're gonna build out your item database um, and it's gonna, it's gonna use it over and over and over again, which is really cool. Let me show you a little quicker way that we can do this. So I'm gonna go back into my brick folder and I'm gonna create another item and let's do some type M. Um, boom. And let's say we purchased that by the 80 pound sack. Again, we're, we're measuring this off of, off of square feet. And then we're gonna do the conversion right here. So how many square feet you know, does an 80 pound sack of type in mortar um, cover? 
So that answer is 32 square feet. There we go. You could actually read that right off the bag if you, if you picked one of these up at, at Lowe's. I can say that that is also a material and we're gonna say we pay 23.50. Again, you can do an accounting code if, if you like. That is a completely optional field. But instead of just hitting add, which would do what it says it does, you know, it would add it to here. A shortcut is just create and add another. So I can hit create and add another, boom. We can see it added my mortar over here and it allows me to just kind of retype some things over here. So I could say, you know what? We want to do some mason sands. And with that, we'll say, okay, maybe that's a cubic yard is how we purchase it. Um, again, square foot is the measurement and we're going to change our equation here to say 125 square feet equals a cubic yard. And there we go. So especially if you're doing like a like type, you know, if you're working on, you know, 10 items in a row that have the same purchase unit and have the same uh, unit measure, and especially if they have the same coverage, right, you can just keep using this create and add another, create and add another, create and add another, and you can find that you can honestly create an item in, a, you know, four to five seconds. You know, it's, it becomes really, really quick. Well, let's just start with these three items. Let's add this in, boom. All right, so we have three items. So we're off to a good start. Let's go back into our project again, because this is where we create uh, the items or assemblies, but it's not where we attach them. So to that, we'll go back into our little, let's make sure that we don't have any items or assemblies we do, off you go. Okay. All right, so standard brick, I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go down here to this add items and assemblies section. I'm gonna click on this. Here's a little trick, okay? It defaults to the assembly side. So if you're looking here or you try to search, and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't find my items. Um, it's because you have to do one extra click, move it over there and now we can see all my items and we can see my little folder. And here's my brick folder and I wanna grab you know, all three of these items two, three, and I'm gonna add those items, and that's it. I mean, honestly, that that is it. Um, you know, we've already measured our standard bricks, so there's nothing else to do over, you know, on the takeoff side. All we have to do is just go into reports. Eventually, we'll go into estimates, um, but to show you, okay, these are the materials generated off of that. So, um, you know, we're saying standard brick, you know, at 80 cents each, we're gonna need, you know, almost 8,700 bricks. Our type in water, you know, at 23.50, we're gonna need, you know, almost 210 80 pound sacks. And here's our mason sand, 23.50 per cubic yard. We're gonna need almost 54 cubic yards. And we can see that we priced that out very, very, very quickly, okay? So I'll show you how we can even do that even faster. But first, let me, take a screenshot of this. I wanna show you these values because we're gonna take a different route here in a second. Awesome. Captured that and off we go. So what's really cool about working with items and assemblies, first of all, is that you create them once you know, and, and you're good to go. Uh, the second thing is I can now add the standard brick to my library and I don't ever have to go through that process again of adding items or assemblies, right? So basically I can create this you know, as a template. So I can go right here and say, I wanna add that to my library. Um, I should have uploaded a blend project. Let's see if we have a blend project, upload test three. Yep, blank enough for me. Get rid of these just so you can see the full. Boom, boom, boom. And we can go into this plan page. I already have the scale set. And I can go to my library tab, which is searchable. And I could say standard, and there's my standard brick. I have now three of them. Hit my little green arrow, and then off I go. Oh, I'm not measuring off an elevation, so picture that I'm working off an elevation. Bad example. But I'm done, right? So all I'm doing is hitting that um, 
you know, green arrow, I'm going to go measure if my items are already attached. So it's going to calculate that for me with really just the click of a button, right? All I did was go here, start to type the word standard and hit this little green arrow and I, I was up and running. You know, so honestly, once you get the items and materials set up, um, it's, it's just as easy. You're already doing the hard part of measuring. Uh, so just adding the item assembly is, is really simplistic and you can get you know, material quantities in you know, a second or two of, of extra effort there. So very, very important. Use your library. It will help you immensely. All right, back we go. So you're like, okay, well, I built my three items and that worked really well for me. So why would I want to create an assembly? So let's start down that path. Let me go back to my standard brick and let's remove these little guys. Off you go. And let's come back and attack this from the assembly route. All right, back up to assemblies. I'm going to do a terrible naming scheme up here again. Um, one one webinar. Oops, not exclamation point. And we are going to create our first assembly. I could do the same. I could say that this is a brick. You know, create a new folder here. We'll do that to be consistent. And there's my little brick folder, and we are going to create an assembly. All right, here we go. So this, I can say this is my brick assembly. I can give it an ID number if you want. This is an optional field. And again, the unit measure, how we're measuring this. So we're working off an elevation, so this will be a square foot measurement. I can add a description to this assembly if I want to. Again, that is optional and add. Okay, we're going to start this one off being like really basic. So required items, we're going to add three required items. Here, I'm going to go into my little webinar folder, to my brick folder, and say one, two, three. There we go. So you can see it carried over my coverage rate. Remember, this was the little mathematical part that we did kind of in the center of the item, and it carried all of that over for us. Um, and in this case, I'm fine, so I'm just going to say save. And I'll go back to our standard brick. I have removed everything off. And this time, I'll click Add Items and Assemblies. It defaults to the assembly side, so I'm good for this one. Hop right in here and grab our brick assembly, attach it, save, and that's it. Okay. So in this case, the advantage was, you know, instead of clicking the three items, I just clicked one assembly that housed those three items, okay? But look, the data is exactly the same, exactly the same. So I'll open up my little screenshot and drag it over here, or try to drag it over here. Look, 869128. 20913, So we accomplished the same thing using two different routes, right? But we, but in the end, we accomplished the same things. So there are a lot of people like to just work off items, and that's fantastic, um, or throw them into an assembly to kind of consolidate it. So those were kind of the simple, the simple mechanisms, right? But very functional. You know, if I'm using you know, these three materials in that brick wall. You know, I'm good to go. I am great. Um, and next week we'll talk about you know, actually building an estimate and proposal off of this data, which is fantastic. All right, so now you're like, hmm, okay, that doesn't seem too bad. So why would we want to make it, you know, more complicated than that? It doesn't have to be doesn't have to be super complicated, but let me show you kind of where we're going. We'll just add another layer here to see the advantage of, of why I might want to use an assembly. Let's go back into the assembly that we just created into brick. And here we go. So let's let's get rid of our standard brick. 
Bye bye. And let's get rid of our um, mortar. Okay, so right now, the only thing listed here is, is our mason's sand. So we have a concept here called items groups. Okay, and this will start to make sense as, as we do um, a couple of these. But I can say I want to add a group, and I can say that this will be my brick. Okay. And then I can add items to this group. I can be like, okay. Boom, boom. And I could add my standard brick. But, you know, what we should really do is make this a little bit better example and add some more. We don't want to just see you know, one brick there. So let's go back up. Let's go back to our webinar. Back into our brick. And let's build a couple more. Now let's do a utility brick. Um, we'll say per, uh, let's do per thousand. So you can see what that would look like. Again, you have complete control here. This can be, you know, a tube, it can be a bucket, it can be a, a wheelbarrow, you know, however you purchase this material. Um, as long as you can come up with a coverage rate, you can be as flexible here as you want. Again, we're measuring in square foot. If we do that by the thousand, it'd be 333. And again, that would be a material. We'll talk about labor here in a minute. And I'm just going to make up a number here. 400. And let's do one more. So create and add another. I'm just going to change the word utility to queen. I'll clean correctly. My purchase unit, I'll leave that as a thousand. My coverage rate is a little different, it's 216. And we can say that that costs a little bit more per thousand. Okay. So now I have uh, three different kinds of bricks our queen, our standard, and our utility. And let's, let's add some more mortar. So I could have been creative and, you know, created a subfolder for brick and a subfolder for mortar if I wanted to, um, but I'm fine with that. So let's do some type in mortar. And we'll purchase that by a 60 pound sack. You know, measure will be square feet. And then we'll do a little coverage right here, 32. And cost type again will be material. And I am making up a price and create and add another. And we'll do a type S. And that'll be an 80 pound sack. And let's update 10.5. Okay. We created some items. So in the real world, you know, we could be selective. We'll, we'll hop back into the assembly for, for, for a minute. But look, if I wanted to just survive in the items world, I could go to my standard brick. Off you go, a little brick assembly. I could go to add items, go to my items tab right there and go into my webinar and I could just select. I'd be like, you know what, on this job, we're using queen brick and we're using type in mortar and our mason sand. Right, so I can just make this kind of a, a selectable, you know, I just can, and then all of this is searchable too. So if you get a, a long list, it, it is really easy to type um, queen search, and it's going to narrow that list so you can quickly add, add your items. So staying in the items world, we can still do that, but let's see what happens if we go back to our assembly and actually add those bricks in. Oops, wrong one. Here we go. So this was my brick group, and let's actually add some bricks this time. So we want to add our queen, our standard, and our utility brick. I'm going to add those three items. And then I'm also going to create another group. And this will all make sense in just a minute. Now I'm going to say that we're going to do our mortar group. And we're going to add those items. I totally spelled that wrong. Um, we're going to add these in. 
and our type N. Oh my God, I didn't spell it wrong. Type N and our type S. And we're good. So you can see the coverage rates carried over. And in this case, I'm not going to override them. You know, these are fine. It's kind of the next step is we're going to be talking about formulas. But for me, this is good. So the difference between this assembly and our first assembly was that we were very prescriptive. We said, OK, this assembly includes this mason sand. It includes this mortar. And it included this brick, right? So that exact, you know, three materials had to be matched. Whereas this, we're going to see when we attach this, now we're going to have some flexibility. So the mason sand will be on there by default. We know we're going to need mason sand. But now we're going to be able to pick, you know, what type of mortar and what type of brick for the wall that, that we measured. So let's see what that looks like in practice. Save. Back we go back into our standard brick. And we're going to go to add items and assemblies. Again, it's going to default to assembly, so we're good. Go to our little webinar and add our brick assembly. And notice there'll be a change here. So I'm going to add this assembly, and it's going to look a little different for us this time. Add an assembly, and look, we have a drop down. So I can say, yes, we are going to use queen brick. And we are going to use type N more. Boom. There we go. So the assembly gave us some flexibility, right? Because as long as the assembly has those combinations in it, we can just reuse that assembly over and over and over again. You know, and it's generated our materials, right? We have our pricing, we have our quantities. This is just going to be amazingly helpful once we get into the estimate because a lot of our work will be done for us. So that is a little bit more, you know, complex of an assembly. So let's take it a step further. Okay. Let's go back to our assemblies and back into our brick. Okay. So like I said, the, the coverage rate is carried over, but there may be times that we want to override that. Okay, again, where I was kind of saying at the beginning that that stack is just amazingly powerful when it comes to mathematical formulas. You can do just about anything that you can imagine in, in stack. So let's take our first little step into that. So we'll take our queen brick. I'm going to click here, and this is going to bring up our little formula editor here, OK? So let's kind of talk through this kind of slowly. So these over here are the variables that already exist in Stack. So when I created my brick takeoff, I chose the measurement type as the area, OK? And then the rest of these are just the measurement types that already exist in, in Stack. There's no, no setup required. You know, this, this is just already there for you. Um, but say that we want to take our measured area, OK? Add that, add it into our little formula editor, and say that we want to um, multiply that by some sort of custom input field. So I can say, hey, I want to add my own variable. And I can say wide. This will be the, the the layers, the layers wide of brick. And I can say save. And I can say, okay, I want the application, I don't want stack, to take the area that I measured. So picture this would be a, a number that's plugged in here by stack. I want to multiply that by the layers. Okay. So let's say that I have you know two or three layers of brick going into this wall, and then ultimately divide that by our coverage rate, which is 216, which is this number right there, OK? So now we're starting to get some more power here, OK? It's like, OK, now you know this assembly is not only going to calculate you know, the brick per thousand, but it's going to be based on 
a question that it asks me and, and the answer that I give it, okay? When you're building assemblies, remember how I said we could create an item and just hit add? But then if you use the create and add another, it's quicker, right? There are there are shortcuts here. So I have three different kinds of brick. You know, I don't have to go type this exact formula for the other two types of brick. I just need to know the coverage rate. So I can just copy this. Oh, let me talk about something first. You can test it right here. This is really handy, especially if you're building your first um, assemblies. You can test it here and say, hey, I'm measuring. You know, a thousand square feet. I'm going to do one layer deep, so it's going to take that 216 divided by a thousand and give us that number. So this is a great little area to practice in. All right, copy this little guy. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to go into here. I'm just going to paste this right, but I'm going to change my cover trade. And I'm not going to type all of those. We'll do 0.769 because this one I did, you know, per brick as opposed to per thousand. And I'm good. Save. Hit this other one. My coverage rate is uh, 333. Paste. 333. Again, I could test it if I want. Now we're good. All right. So we've added a little bit of complexity, but we've also added some power here. Let me go back so I can go save, go back to our project, go back to our brick. Let's remove it and start from scratch. Grab my little brick assembly. And this time again, it's gonna look a little bit different. So I'm gonna add my assemblies and look, it's gonna ask me for my layers. So I can say, you know what? There are two layers of brick on my brick walls that I measured. And then I can choose again, you know, my type of brick, my type of mortar, boom, hit save. And now when I go to my report, you now my brick count will be much higher because it's reflecting two layers, right? I've got two layers, so it's very, very important. Um, so you can continue just to build these out. Now we can go back to our assemblies, go back to our brick assembly, and build this out as far as we wanted. You know, there are just infinite possibilities in, in Stack where you can just create a lot of different um, custom variables and make Stack do you know exactly what you, you want it to do. Um, it's just tremendous power. In most cases, though, you don't have to do that. You honestly don't. This is actually, you know, this would probably take care of 90% of use cases. And this wasn't terrible. And again, if you get in here and you're like, you know, how did Troy do that? How did I do that custom variable? You know, hit your little chat button up here um, and, and schedule training because we're here to, to help you with this. We realize that this can be, you know, a confusing part. But what we built here is actually a very functional little assembly, okay? Probably time to build this if I wasn't trying to, to talk about it and, and explain it. I probably could have done this, you know, two minutes, three minutes. Um, it's a very painless process. Um, you can also control order. So if I want my, you know, my type S, say that's the one that I use on most jobs, I can just go up here and order it. So I click my little up, that moves it to the middle and up. And now type S will be, you know, at the top of my drop down. Okay. Um, the same with my, my brick here. So you can order it. So if you usually use it, you know, the same type of material, you can make it at the top of the drop down, just making it quicker. Okay. All right. That is our little custom assembly. Let's talk about stack assemblies. Okay, so this one, remember this is the one we just it asked us for the for the Y, you know, the number of layers, and it asked us for which type of brick and the type of mortar. So let's get rid of this little guy. And let's go back into the stack world um, so that you can see what this looks like. And then I'll show you how you can 
modify one of this built-in stack. So we're just gonna go into stack. Again, I could search, be super fast. I'll kind of drill in just to show you guys where these things exist. We're just gonna go into the main stack of folders here and go into masonry. We'll go into brick masonry. Boom. And we'll go to an elevation view and we'll go back to our standard brick. If you've not played with any of these areas, you know, click through. You're, we have an immense amount of work here that is already, you know, in many cases already already done for you. Um, you can also, we won't in this example, but you could add, you know, multiple assemblies. You, you're not limited to just, you know, one assembly per takeoff. I could add, you know, three assemblies and two additional items if I wanted to, right? So you have complete control here. But let me show you what the stack one looks like so you can kind of compare it to uh, the one that we just built. We're gonna add that one assembly. You're gonna see oh, a little more questions and actually it remembers the ones that we <laughs> used last time, which is pretty powerful. So again, here's uh, you know the number of layers. Here it's asking for the flashing roll length in feet. So we give you kind of this little helper text um, so you can help identify. So I can say, yep, I buy my flashing roll in a six foot length. Crew production per brick hour, brick per hour. So, you know, how many brick can my crew do? Um, we'll say 100. I can choose my mortar. I can choose my crew configuration. Um, we didn't talk about labor items, but we'll talk about that real quick too. Um, I can choose my brick ties, my flashing, and my weight pulls. So you can see, you know, we've added more fields, but all these are our groups, right? So in our smaller example, we had two groups, one for brick and one for mortar. Um, and you can see that we've added some additional, but th the concept is the same, but we just added these additional, these additional groups, okay? And here's our, our text input. So these would be the custom variables. Um, that we added in our in our example, we did this custom variable for the for the layers, and there we go. So I would hit save again. You know the work is already done. You know we've already measured. If I go into my reports, you're going to see that's going to give me more data because we were you know looking at a more robust assembly. You can tell I don't have all my local pricing in yet. The only one I have is my standard brick. If you're using um, a stack assembly and you want to add pricing, the easiest way, honestly, is just to run your mouse over there, copy this little guy, go into items, because remember everything starts out as an item. I can just go in here and paste this little item, let stack find it for me. Boom, and there it is, and I can put a, a price in there. Save. And if I go back to um, my report, you can see my mortar now has a price. So it's gonna start to price out that project. Again, you only do this once, you know, and you're gonna reuse these over and over for your future projects, okay? Now say, now say that you're using a, a stack assembly and it's either missing something from a dropdown or maybe there's just like a, a, a drop down in this entirety that you just don't want to be there, okay? So if we go follow our path again, down here, you won't have all of this. You'll just have the stack assembly. Sorry for the confusing look here. And I go back into my standard brick assembly, masonry, my elevation view, brick. And grab my standard brick. So this is what it looks like, you know, has this. This is that. So in this one, there was three required items. And then again, the item groups, exactly the same concept um, that we built. Okay, exactly the same. Now you'll notice if I click over here, you know, I can't, I can't do anything. I can't type, I can highlight it, but I can't. I can't edit this in any way as it is. So the key here is if you wanna edit a stack assembly, choose save as, Oop. 
and then say where you want it to go. And there it is, awesome. So if I go back to my assemblies now, oops, didn't drop it in there. There we go. And let's get out of there and into my webinar, into my brick. Look, there it is. And now everything is completely editable. Okay, so I can do anything that I want here. Um, so say, you know, there was a different type of brick tie. Again, you're going to start by building it as an item. So we can't actually create the item and attach it at the same time. We would have to go back into our little brick folder and create an additional brick tie and then add it to this group. And then it'll be there forever, right? And you can, again, change the order. You can delete anything out that you don't want. Um, say that you don't want to track labor. You know, you don't, you can just get rid of it. You know, hit the trash can, boom. And that would be, it's gone, just like that. Um, don't worry about breaking things, because if I were to delete something I didn't mean to, you know, this is in my personal area, I can just go back to stack you know, do a save as and drop it back in here. So no worries about, you know, causing any kind of destruction here, but you, you can customize these and do whatever you want. So if one's missing, you never drop down, you're like missing material. It is fairly easy to make these modifications. Again, if this looks intimidating, um, you know, ask for help. We are totally here to help you, okay? We didn't talk about labor, so let me talk about labor as an item really quickly. And I know I'm getting low on, on time. <laughs> Pretty soon Dave's gonna hop in here. Um, all right, say, let's create an item and say, hey, that we have some brick. Oh, I can spell brick all labor. Um, say that I wanted that by, you know, the hour, or I could do it, you know, per thousand brick, or I could do it you know, based on an eight hour day. You can control this however you want, right? So let's say per hour, and I would say, you know, one person can do, you know, 50, oh, I'm per hour, square feet, 50 square feet per hour. Okay, now if I was saying here, oh, two people. Oh, that's my two. I would say that is 100, assuming that, assuming that that number would number would, would double. And I would just use that as a labor. So it is very easy to track labor within Stack and it's completely flexible. You know, most of ours are built, um, our pre-built assemblies are created with crew hours, um, but you can do this man hour, man day, uh, man week, um, three day. You, it's unlimited, right? All you're going to do is change your coverage rate right here. So let me try to sum things up really quickly. Let's add our little labor item since we took the time to build it. So in this session, we built some items, okay? So in the beginning, we started just building like three items and we attached it to the takeoff. And then I showed how we could save that to the library. So it works the same, right? So in the example, I had attached items, but if you attach items or assemblies or a combination of items or assemblies and you save them to your library, they're there the next time you need them. You don't have to go through this reattachment process. So the key is, is, is using li your library. We then took those three items created a couple more to give us some different variations of brick and mortar. And we created an assembly, right? Which gave us the ability to choose the type of brick and the type of mortar from a dropdown, okay? Which was fantastic. Um, and then we took that assembly a step further and added another variable for the number of, of layers of brick in that wall. And again, the, the sky is the limit. You know, if you wanna use 20 variables, you know, Use 20 variables, um, stack, stack can handle it, <laughs> trust me. Um, so that is a pretty deep dive into items and assembly. So I'm hoping that I pointed you at least in the right direction. 
um, I think Dave's gonna kind of hop in and talk about a couple more polls and um, see if we have any questions. We do, Troy, that was fantastic. So let's, uh, we did a few questions pop in, we'll get to those and then based on that, we'll do the polls. So the first question is, is there a quick way to adjust material cost? For example, prices increased almost annually. How do I uh, quickly change pricing for all my materials each year? Okay, awesome. This is what I would do. That is a great question. So I would go, I would have, let's change our, our name here. Now let's do, uh, do another top level one. So I would say this is my 2021 item pricing okay boom um uh, it went way down and there somewhere there we go now you can either you know input these items one at a time by using add you can input these using the create and add another which is you know really really nice now if you have thousands of items i bet that you have them in an excel spreadsheet okay so contact, you know, chat in, chat in. I'm seeking to get a hold of your your customer success manager or your account manager. Um, they can review the type of format that that Excel spreadsheet needs to be. You can send it to Stack, and then we'll import those items for you. So I would do it, you know, 2021 item pricing, and then next year I would do a 2022 item pricing and then send us that you know send us that excel sheet and we'll import it for you with all your same items with your updated pricing and then when you're working you can choose oh do i want my 2021 pricing do i want my 2022 pricing uh, but the quick answer there is you know let us let us import that that data for you thanks troy so how do you move an item into a folder after it's been created? Ah, oh, it's kind of painful. I hate to even show it. Um, all right. So here is our brick folder. So say that we've got, you know, we've got a brick labor and we have these little items. So say that, you know, I got real excited. I was working the stack and I just started creating. Oh my gosh, I don't have one. Great. That's kind of crazy. I usually have some outside of a folder. That's all right. We'll go into test. What a terrible name. Um, here's a two by 12 stud. So say that I want to move this two by 12 stud into our webinar folder. Okay. So I'm going to click on this little guy. We have a save as option. So I'm going to do a save as and go drop it into webinar. And there it went. Boom. I missed my little cue to drop it into the second folder. Um, but it still exists down here in test. So think of it as you're making a copy and you're gonna drop a copy into the new folder and then you're gonna go back and delete the original. Now we'll be working on some better drag and drop and uh, some, you know, some better ways to accomplish that later uh, this year, hopefully. Um, but as a moment right now, you will wanna do a save as. So if you have a lot of them, it can get a little tedious. That's why it is it is better, you know, if you can kind of think through your folder structure um, before creating. You can absolutely do it after the fact. I'm just acknowledging that we don't have a great way of doing it. You know, there's no way to multi-select and grab, you know, all five of these. It's it's one at a time, and then go back and delete the original. Great, Troy. How about, uh, are you able to change currencies for the assemblies? Oh, soon. Oh my gosh, what a timely question. Yeah, Dave, did you like that? <laughs> I think, that, I think that, that was perfectly set up. Um, actually, I think as soon as next week you will be, okay? So this doesn't exist in your account today, but it will next week. So let's see if I have it here. If I go to my little person icon here, and I go to my account settings, and I go to my company settings, look at this, location. So you can choose um, your, your default currency. So if you're not in the United States, you know, you're somewhere else, you can change that. Um, I'm working on kind of a future version of Stack, so this doesn't exist um, in your account today, but I think that it will 
um, next week. So see this little present icon up here? And this is how we announce um, the different features. So watch for um, a little what's new. There'll be a little green dot up here and it'll say international currency. Again, we're just we're just days <laughs> days away. That was a perfect question. And then you'll so, be able to do that. Thanks, Troy. So let's do a couple polls here uh, before we run out of time. So I'm gonna launch the next one. So if you are not using items or assemblies, that's 60 some odd percent that answered at the beginning prior to the webinar starting. So how likely would you be to give them a try now? Just another minute here. Okay, we're gonna close this one down and share the results. And you can see that, uh, well done, Troy, because it looks like the vast majority of people, based on what they've seen, are gonna give this a try. So awesome. that's great to see. That makes me very happy. And we've got one more. So based on what you've seen, which of um, what you've seen would you be most likely to implement? Just the items, just the stack items, the assemblies, both, or yeah, none of the above? Okay, looks like we've got most people have voted. We'll close this one down and share the results and you can see that most people certainly see the value of both and are planning on moving forward with that. So we certainly awesome. appreciate uh, those answers. Uh, let me check back. I do see one other question that came in. Um, you showed the formula bar earlier, Troy. Is it yes. possible to create conditionals in there if something this, if not the other, something else? You can use, you can use if statements. Um, you can use if statements. So let me try to jump in to, to better answer your question. You know, so I could use, it's a very, it's a very Excel-like experience. Um, so you could use if statements. There's a lot of things that you could do. The only thing that we, we can't do is I can't, let's say that I want to feed this assembly with this assembly's output, right? So if, say this assembly creates data for me, there's no way to import it into that. Um, but on the assembly itself, and actually I can show you, um, let's go back in the stack assemblies. Um, most of our concrete assemblies have really complex, uh, rebar ca calculations are, are very, very complex. Let me just show you one of these to show you kind of where you can where you can go. I mean, so this is one formula right here um, for a 16 gauge tie wire. That's what I'm saying. You know, the power is, is there. You know, you can make stack calculate just about anything imaginable, and you can see you know lots of, of if statements throughout. Um, so there is a tremendous amount of power here. If this scares you, you know, close your eyes. You don't have to build them this complex. <laughs> but if you want to, you, you certainly can. Well, th thanks for that, Troy. So um, that is pushing right up against the top of the hour. So I would, on behalf of Troy and myself, would like to thank everyone very much for attending. I hope you learned some great new stuff about items and assemblies. So next week, same time, um, we are going to take it the next step and Troy is really gonna dig into this level of detail and show you how you can use everything we've learned today to actually use what we call our estimate worksheet and create that full estimate, as well as create proposals and have them production ready to send over to your clients. So we'll look forward to seeing all of you then. Thanks everybody. Thank you.